Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have a brand new set of crazy revenge stories. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Revenge visits the noisiest neighbors on the street. So this just happened this past weekend. My neighbors are nice enough people, but damn, are they noisy in everything they do. Now, it's not horrible noise, no violence, no excessive fighting or swearing, no car revving, no construction type noise, just day to day noise. They talk loud. They play music loud. They have large gatherings of family and they're all loud. It's just nonstop. To add to the noise, dad is also the coach of a sporting team. And this is where the worst of it comes from. Where I'm from, we have restrictions on allowable noise from construction, so no power tools before 6.30 a.m. and no large machinery before 7 a.m. Most people also use this as a rule of thumb for party noise, etc. Now, Coach Dad likes to put his kids through training sessions every morning before school. This involves plenty of loud motivational music, Dad shouting encouragement, and a beat machine. The ones that go beep, 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 go. Beep. Beep, beep, stop. And it's loud. I mean, heard three houses away loud. This combined with flipping tractor tires in the street, counting repetitions and grunts of exertion, all from 6.30 a.m. daily, it gets really old quickly. As neighbors, we've asked nicely to back off on the loudness and got a smile and a not really possible sorry as a response. The elderly folks across the street, the neighbors on the other side, the neighbors behind have all previously asked and had the same response. Fair enough. I believe in karma. And it arrived. As I said, they talk loud and it's not possible to not hear what they discuss at times. Well, I overheard them discussing that they will now be hosting a church meeting every second weekend in their backyard and how important it is that they are good hosts as they will be on show for the whole congregation. I can work with this. So I approached the neighbors on the other side and we hatched a plan. Sunday arrives and the congregation starts arriving, all in their nice outfits, greeting and thanking their hosts for the lovely setting. Cue my sudden desire to mow the lawn, slowly, on full throttle. Sadly, it coincides with the beginning of the sermon? I don't know what to call it, I'm not religious. Now I know that crap was bothering them because I could see the sideways glances through the fence. Of course I had to rake up the cut grass because the catcher's broken. I like to do it with music playing. Did I mention I love ACDC? And it's got to be loud. So I finished my raking, and at this stage, Coach Dad has put his head over the fence, didn't say anything, just stared. So I waved, let him know I'd finished, and went inside, and texted the other neighbor. Now they must have had a break in the sermon, because they all got up and did stuff before coming back, sitting around in a circle to sing songs. Cue the other neighbor. He races go-karts. No muffler engine revving it was totally ruining the songs of praise. Of course, once done with the go-kart, the boat motor needed to be flushed, and he likes country music a lot. Now, I can't be certain, but judging by the looks we got on departure, we may have done something to ruin their morning. The most annoying thing is my lawn needs mowing every two weeks. Oh well, at least I can listen to music while doing it. And our next story. EM ruins park property and gets karma for it. I used to do part-time volunteer work for a local park. It was pretty basic stuff like picking up trash and light security, which was just making sure that people aren't damaging the park property or to report anything shady going on. This park was fairly big and had a jungle gym in the back of it behind the wall of trees. One day, I noticed there are tire marks in the grass right where a turn out of the back is. It's fairly easy to make that turn and doesn't come out of nowhere or anything so I don't know why someone would go through the grass. Also, keep in mind it was very muddy and cold, so the tire marks were pretty much cemented in the grass after it was run over. I call my supervisor, and they say that we will fix that area when it gets a little warmer out, which was going to be later that week. A couple days later, when I'm near the front of the park patrolling, I notice a minivan coming up from the back of the park. It goes right through the same area of the grass that was previously ran over. I couldn't believe I just witnessed it happen. The turn doesn't come out of nowhere, and you can clearly see that going straight out will take you through the grass. 
I start jogging towards the van, waving my arms to get the driver's attention. She stops and rolls down her window, wearing thick sunglasses, and looked at me confused at first. She also had two kids in the back. EM. What? Me. Excuse me, miss. I'm one of the park workers. You drove straight through the grass back there. With how muddy it is right there, the grass gets damaged very easily. Okay. She clearly didn't care and shocked me a bit that she didn't apologize about it. Well, the grass is going to need to be put back, I understand if it was a mistake, but please be more careful when coming out from the back. I can tell she's giving me a dirty look, even with her giant sunglasses covering most of her face. Whatever, she says rudely and drives out towards the entrance after I say thanks and back away from the van. Fast forward a couple of days. Me and the supervisor had just finished flattening the dirt and putting down new seed for that area in the morning. I was pretty happy with how it turned out and the grass would look nice, better than it did before once it grew. Later that day, when I come back to patrol the park, I notice the same minivan in the back parking lot. I head over to the jungle gym area and of course I see the entitled mom on a bench looking at her phone while her kids are playing. I was hoping in the back of my mind that she would have listened to me yesterday, but judging from how she acted, I was doubtful. I did a couple of walks around the back area, making sure that there wasn't any trash, and when I saw her tell the kids it was time to go, I sprinted toward the front of the park entrance, stand in front of a car at the front, and put my own pair of sunglasses on. I keep them in a fanny pack along with some medical supplies in my phone so that she wouldn't recognize me and stay on the path. Like how you slow down on the road when passing a police officer? Once her van starts coming up, I'm watching in disbelief as once again she doesn't turn and goes right through the same area again that we had just fixed up this morning. I was PO'd now. I walk up to her van, this time being in the middle of the pavement, and she stops when I approach, rolling down her window and giving me a PO'd look that I stopped her again. Oh my god, what do you want? Miss... You ran over that area again. We'd finished fixing it this morning and you just ran it over. So? It's just some effing grass. You should just make that whole area pavement so it won't get ran over. You can clearly see that the grass is in front of you when you drive up from the back area. It doesn't come out of nowhere and we've never had anyone run over that area. Only you. I had a frustrated tone in my voice but was still trying to be polite. Her kids in the back were glued to their tablets and weren't paying any mind to me other than when they heard their mom swear. They looked to be around six or eight, I think. She gives me one more nasty look before rolling up her window and driving away. Didn't even respond to my last point. Also, she almost ran over my foot since she didn't wait for me to back away from her van before driving off. That was my tipping point. I call my supervisor again and tell him what happened. I could tell he was pretty PO'd over the phone, but said that he had a plan to stop that area from getting ran over anymore. I met him on Friday morning, and he had this giant boulder in the back of his pickup truck. I knew instantly what we were going to be doing with it. After some work getting it down, digging up the dirt, and wedging it into place, we finished putting the boulder in. I had to admit that it made me sad that there was now this eyesore of a rock there, and all our work previously was for nothing. But I was happy the entitled mom wouldn't be running over that area anymore. Later that day, I'm in the back picking up trash when I see the same minivan pull into the parking lot. I know it's the entitled mom and her kids because I remember their license plate this time. I pay no mind to them. I know that she couldn't run over the grass again when they leave now. Later on, I was cleaning some bird poop off a statue when I heard a loud crash sound that came from the front. I run over to where it came from shocked as I see the entitled mother's van with the giant boulder we put down wedged between her tire and the bumper of her car. She gets out of the van in shock at what happened, swearing and shouting. I personally didn't want to damage her car, just realized she couldn't drive through the grass anymore, so I did feel some guilt at seeing the giant boulder wedged in her car. I came over to the other side to see that the wheel was off the ground slightly and the front bumper wedged atop the boulder. I don't know how she even managed that, honestly. She sees me and immediately gets a look of pure, concentrated anger. You, she says, walking up to me, stomping her feet. You put that rock there, didn't you, a-hole? Miss, my supervisor brought that boulder in this morning for that spot because you were running over the grass. 
I don't know how you can even hit it since, again, you can clearly see it coming from the back. I was texting my friend, you a-hole. You're going to pay for this damage. Yeah, I don't think so. She fumes and heads back to her car. She has her two kids get out and go sit at a table nearby, both still playing on their tablets. EM, though, got back in the car and is on the phone. A few minutes later, she tells me she called the police and that I'm going to be arrested for intentionally damaging her property. I admit I was a bit worried at what story she gave them probably wasn't the truth, so I called my supervisor again. He got here even before the police did. I saw him laughing as he pulled up and saw the situation. He walks up to the entitled mom and explains who he is, and she starts yelling at him about how she's going to sue and have him and myself arrested for the damage. A few minutes later, the police pull up, and she tells them that we intentionally put that rock there to damage her car. But we explained to the officers that she had driven over the grass several times, even after we'd fixed it and put that boulder down to keep her and others from driving through the grass. The police got some more information from us and told the entitled mom that we were in the right to put the boulder down and aren't liable for her poor driving. EM, frustrated, tells her kids to get back in the car and actually starts to back out off the boulder. My supervisor, the officers, and I all watch as the boulder is scraping up the bottom of her car as she backs out. Once off it, her front bumper slams onto the pavement and is now hanging down off the left side. Something under her car was also touching the pavement, which was apparent as she started to drive away and the sound of something scraping against the road could be heard. The officers stop her and tell her that her car is now not safe to drive on the road and she needs to get it towed. My supervisor and I went home shortly after, smiling and laughing at what happened that day. I can safely assume now that she won't be going over that grass anymore. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.